from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. A Henrico supervisor calls for a vote on the potential creation of a civilian review board and the story behind the name of a new Henrico neighborhood. We'll have details about those stories and a COVID-19 update on today's Henrico News Minute. It's Monday, November 16th, 2020, and it's brought to you today by Commonwealth Catholic Charities and Henrico Area Mental Health. And now for the news. Verina District Supervisor Tyro Nelson, who first proposed the idea of a civilian review board for Henrico's Division of Police back in June, is now asking his fellow Board of Supervisors members to put the matter to a vote next month. In a letter to the board last week, Nelson proposed that supervisors vote either at their December 1st or 15th meeting on the creation of a board composed of 10 or 15 members. His proposal would allow each supervisor to appoint two or three members from his or her district to the board. During the summer, the board solicited and received significant citizen input about the possible creation of a CRB. The majority of those who responded in the hundreds by email and those who commented during a public hearing in a Brooklyn district meeting about the topic also expressed support for such a board. At the conclusion of the public hearing August 24th, a majority of board members, Nelson and fellow Democrat Frank Thornton of the Fairfield District and Republican 3 Chop District Supervisor Tommy Brannon, also expressed support for the creation of a board. Brooklyn District Supervisor Dan Schmidt and Tuckahoe District's Pat O'Bannon opted not to make their positions known publicly at that time. A majority vote is all that's necessary in order to create a CRB. At that meeting, supervisors opted to monitor several bills that were proposed during this summer's special session of the General Assembly before they took any action. Now that the session is complete and Governor Ralph Northam has signed into law a bill that authorizes localities in the state to create CRBs with subpoena power if they choose to, Nelson wants to put the issue to a vote here. Nelson has said that he appreciates the Henrico police and doesn't hold any personal grievance against the division, but that fundamentally there's a disconnect between minorities and police in general, one that was amplified by George Floyd's death in Minneapolis in May and other incidents before and since. In September, the Henrico Division of Police welcomed its first black chief, Eric English, who arrived after two years as chief in Harrisonburg and a long tenure in Richmond. He's previously expressed support for various oversight committees and even established a use of force review board in Harrisonburg that involved two citizens. Opponents of a CRB have pointed to Henrico's status as one of just 18 police divisions in the nation to hold accreditation from the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies as evidence that it does not need such oversight, which they've also argued could be unfair if the board contains citizens who are unfamiliar with policing. The board is scheduled to meet just once this month, which has already happened, and so its next meeting will be that December 1st meeting. A little bit of good news on the COVID-19 front, as Henrico County reported a total of 106 cases during the past three days, Friday through Sunday. That dropped the average daily case count during the past seven days all the way down to 42. It had been as high as 54 just a few days earlier. Three new hospitalizations also were reported in connection with the virus in Henrico over the weekend, but no new deaths were reported. The county's seven-day positivity percentage is down to 5.8% as of November 11th. Four more Henrico schools have reported cases of COVID-19 since Friday. The new cases occurred at Deep Run High School, Glen Allen High School, Shady Grove Elementary, and Rivers Edge Elementary, all in the far west end. In total, now there have been 71 cases reported at 42 Henrico schools since August 12th. Every 12 minutes, a Virginian dies from an opioid overdose. Every 12 minutes. Opioid overdoses are on the increase in Henrico. Yes, the opioid epidemic is still impacting residents in Henrico. But you can help. To find out what you can do, 
Go to BounceBackHC.com. That's BounceBackHC.com. Knowledge is power, including learning about naloxin. That's naloxin, which can temporarily reverse the toxic effects of an opioid or heroin overdose. Get informed, get help, save a life. Go to BounceBackHC.com. That's BounceBackHC.com. To equip yourself with the knowledge to help our residents and the community of Henrico County against the opioid epidemic. Knowing what to do will allow you to be prepared to save a life. Go to BounceBackHC.com today. That's BounceBackHC.com or call 804-727-8515. That's 804-727-8515 directly for substance abuse services. This message is sponsored by Henrico Area CSB Prevention Services. When Henrico County Public Schools officials entered into an agreement with an Achievable Dream Academy in 2017, they hoped that it would help level the playing field for students at Highland Springs Elementary School, which serves one of the most impoverished sections of the county. An Achievable Dream is based in Newport News. It partners with school districts to operate schools primarily in underserved communities and provide additional resources and opportunities for their students. At Highland Springs, the program operates on a year-round schedule. It began by serving kindergarten through second grade. It's expanded by one grade level each year and now serves all grade levels at the school. But now three years after their partnership began, Henrico School Board members are not quite sure what to think. Board members sat in shock during Thursday's work session listening to striking academic data from the school's principal, Shania Tolliver, and Director of Elementary Education, Scott Thorpe. The most numbing of those numbers is that last year the percentage of students in grades 1 through 5 at the school who were reading at or above their individual grade levels ranged from just 3% among 5th graders to 19% among 1st and 3rd graders. Tolliver and Thorpe were before the board seeking approval to expand the program into a middle school setting at an existing but unnamed county site so that rising 6th graders could continue in it next fall at an estimated overall cost of about four million dollars but board members were not interested in considering that possibility after seeing the data said Verina district school board member alicia atkins quote i am deeply troubled there's a huge dynamic of dysfunction when we see numbers like this end quote at least two board members christy kinsella of the brooklyn district and marcy shea of tuckahoe suggested that the board might need to consider cutting ties with achievable dream and bringing the school back under the full control of henrico schools on HenricoCitizen.com right now you can click under news and then education to read my complete coverage of this topic where we go in depth and take a deeper look at the program if you have driven along Staples Mill Road in Glen Allen near I-295 you may have seen a new neighborhood called Britland North taking shape and today on HenricoCitizen.com we've got the story behind that name and the young woman whose legacy it commemorates. Our Patty Krzyzewski goes in depth to tell you the story of Britlin Weinstock and the legacy she's left behind. Visit HenricoCitizen.com and click Community to read the article. Three Henrico County schools have been selected to participate in a supplemental science, technology, engineering, and mathematics plus curriculum through a partnership with the Virginia Department of Education and a program called Flying Classroom. Students at Glen Lee and Radcliffe Elementaries and Wilder Middle School, all of which serve primarily minority students, will participate along with five schools in Richmond. Flying Classroom is a STEM plus curriculum based on the global expeditions of a pioneering African-American aviator, Barrington Irving. In 2007, Irving achieved two world records by becoming the youngest pilot and the first African-American flyer to complete a solo flight around the world. He founded Flying Classroom in 2014 to introduce students to STEM career possibilities. Later today, he's scheduled to appear at Richmond International Airport to deliver 350 Flying Classroom STEM kits for the participating students. With them, students will be able to participate in virtual expeditions, adventures, and challenges based on Irving's career and accomplishments, including catching snakes in the Amazon, exploring glaciers, and high-altitude, low-opening parachute jumping. The kits also include at-home activities for students that are aligned with Virginia's academic standards. 
A high school junior from Henrico County was the first place winner in the high school division of the Virginia War Memorial's 2020 Veterans Day Student Essay Contest. Matthew Mishikowski, an 11th grader at Deep Run High School, was honored during the 64th annual Commonwealth Veterans Day ceremony last week at the War Memorial in Richmond. His essay profiled his grandfather. He and the middle school winner from Northern Virginia each received a $200 gift card and their teachers each received a $100 gift card to purchase classroom and educational supplies. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam was the keynote speaker and personally congratulated both student winners. You can visit vawarmemorial.org to read the winning essays. Well, the news is coming fast and furious these days, and if you don't have our Henrico Citizen app, you might be missing some of what we publish. You can download the app for free. It's on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for Henrico Citizen, and once you've got it, you can set notifications to receive updates whenever we publish articles that are of interest to you. Today's Enrico News Minute has been brought to you by Commonwealth Catholic Charities. Change the world for a teen who needs you. Become a foster parent. Learn about Commonwealth Catholic Charities' international foster care program today. Call 804-545-5949 or visit cccofva.org to learn more.